I came to UMBC in 1989. I actually came from private industry. Um, I came in 1989. I started out in the financial services office, which at that time was known as the controller's office, in an accounting position. Um, a little over a year after that, I moved over to telecommunications, also known as Department of Communication Services, and that was also in administration and finance. I stayed with the Department of Communication Services all the way up through 2008, which at that time was a, the telecommunication piece was moved over to Office of Information Technology. Um, we did a split. I continued on with administration and finance. Um, at that time, we had acquired the food service department, and we were overseeing the campus card, food services, and mail services. When I knew I was going to do this interview, I was thinking of what's the first word that comes to mind, and the first word that comes to mind is opportunity. Um, second would be compassion. I find the people here to be very compassionate and understanding. When I first came to UMBC... I thought, because again, I came from private industry, my first thought was people are so relaxed around here because I move fast. That's just my nature. But people would always say, slow down, slow down. And I thought, they're so relaxed. And coming from private industry, it's not like that. You know, you have to boom, 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 move, move, move. And that's what I was used to. Um, after being here a while, I realize it isn't that they're so much relaxed. It's that they take the time to really get to know you. They do care and understand you. Air community, it's a true sense of community. I mean, you feel that. You feel that people care. People take the time to listen and understand. My first experience at UMBC was in 1972. I came up here with my sister. We were picking someone up, and it was just a few buildings then. I never came back until 1989 when I applied for a position, and it had grown. I thought, wow, this place has really grown. But now to look back and see what it was then, what it is now, it's it's so, so much more, larger. Um, when we became in the top 100 best schools, that, that was a very proud feeling to be able to go out and say, I work at UMBC. Um, and then we became the Honors College. It's just, it's just a very proud feeling. A personal experience that I've had with grit and greatness, um, it's very personal to me. It goes back to probably 2000, the year 2000, 19 years ago. Um, I went through something very personal in my personal life, and my son was about 12 years old, and we, we were apart from each other after that for about six years, and he was everything to me, and so that was a very difficult time for me. And I, so at that point, I'm on my own. I had a lot of time. I spent a lot of time here at UMBC working, learning more, and thinking that was it, thinking I lost my son forever. When he turned 18, he decided he wanted to go to UMBC, and he came back around, and he's, I mean, he actually achieved his bachelor's degree here at UMBC in information systems. He then went on to achieve his master's degree in cybersecurity, which is one of the newer programs recently in, I suppose, the last 10 years here at UMBC, um, and him and I are very, very close, and he looks back all the time. He's very proud of UMBC. He still is involved watching the sports. He woke me up at 1 o'clock in the morning when um, UMBC basketball won. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> he was screaming, and I was like, what's wrong? What's wrong to be woke up at 1 a.m. in the morning? And he said, they did it. And that was years after he had already graduated. Even when it seems bleak and you can't see past the fog, just hang in there. And you're going to get through it, and you're going to look back, and you're going to realize, I did get through it. That really was tough, but I made it through, and look, look at the achievements.